Hi, welcome back. So we were, um, let's run it again, F5, and experience the, or F5 again, and experience the exception. So this is the exception that we got. I understand the reason. So it says here that, uh, uh, w w basically what it says here that is that there is a problem with the wide character. Memory problem. Memory problem with the wide character. Let's break. Basically, the problem is that we're allocating a string of characters on the stack, and then we're throwing an exception. Throwing an exception tears down the stack. And over here, we're catching the exception. Well, this also doesn't make any sense. This should be a pointer, if anything. It should be a pointer, too, because the other one was uh, an array of. We can also say an an uh, uh, braces of which is of a, of the same type i doubt if this will take care of the problem so f5 again and f5 again it did take care of the problem i don't think this is the best solution right we had the problem that an object or name was not found that's good but um i think that a better solution i'm not going to implement it now but a better solution in general for our exception uh handling is that from the throw if error we should test and if there's an error we should just throw the HR just throw the HR don't throw the string throwing a string is I don't even know how it's defined in the C++ programming language I don't know how how inside it's implemented it could be dangerous for now it's working so I'm going to leave it since this is not a C++ course this is a direct show course in any case, so there is no file. So basically what we need right now is to create a file. So how do we create a file? Well, we can download a file from, from the internet and just play it. That's one solution. But what I'd like to do now is take a detour and teach you about part of the DirectShow library and this part is called the DirectShow SDK Filter Graph Editor or the Graph Edit. So let's run it. You should have it if you installed properly the SDK. You should have DirectShow if you install the SDK, the latest version of the Windows SDK. In any case, so this is Graph Edit and with Graph Edit we can simulate everything that we do when we write code in direct show code and what I'd like to do right now is I would like to create a small program without code using the graph edit I'd like to create a small program that creates files but just before that let me teach you a little bit about how to use graph edit so first of all let me, okay, so we have this button over here. When I click it, I get this dialog box. And this dialog box has a list of categories. In each one, there is filters. Now, the first category is the audio capture sources. So what we see here are the three sources on my computer that allow you to capture audio. These are audio capture sources. We'll discuss the notion of what a source is and what a filter is, what a render is, what a transform is, pins. We'll, we'll come back to these notions later. Right now we're building a simple application just to show you, you know, just, just to give you a, a tiny introduction to Direct Show. Later we'll go into the definitions and the terms. In any case, so um so I'd like to create I'd like to create a file, a multimedia file. All right, so how do I do it? So let's take the internal microphone that I'm using. So double click it. So this is now the internal microphone. Notice that even now just using this filter, I could right button click the pin and tell it to render the pin. Clicking render pin creates a filter graph 
What we have here is a source filter that gives us audio through the outgoing pin. The incoming pin doesn't do anything, but the outgoing pin actually sends out audio samples. And it's going to hand it over to the default direct sound device. Now, direct sound and direct show, I'm not going to discuss right now the relationship between the two, but this is just the default sound device, the sound playing device. It's a renderer. It says here, rendered. This is the audio input pin, and what comes in by default is simply, is it's played in the speakers, in the default speakers. So if I click it, I should be able to hear myself, hear an echo. Let's try it just for a second. One, two, three. One, two, three. I don't know if you heard it, because right away it goes into a self-feeding loop. Because the microphone is listening to the speakers, and uh, so I, I'm talking to the microphone. The microphone goes into the graph, the microphone goes to the speaker, the speaker lets out a sound, the sound is picked up again by the microphone and a loop is created, it's called um, feedback. And it, in seconds it goes to very high decibels and it could, I don't know, maybe even break the computer. Alright, so again I'm going to run it, maybe this time I'll be, um, maybe we'll, we will lower the volume so that uh, it doesn't, it can barely, yeah, we can hear that, alright, so let's try it again, one, 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 you can hear the feedback more than you can hear me, but believe me, this, it works. Alright, so we don't want to play the audio. We don't want to get an echo effect. It doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to delete this. I cannot delete until I stop. So I stop the graph and I delete it. Good. Again, everything that we do in, in graph edit, in the graph edit application, we can do in code. So this is a phenomenal way of testing ideas that you have before you start writing all the nitty-gritty gritty detailed code right so it's it's very good but many things that you can do in code you cannot do in graph edit so all right so we we need to we want to create a file so for creating files it's very quick very painless all right so we have a microphone let's also add a webcam so we have audio capture let's skip to vv VV is video capture sources and video compressor, so we want the first V. There is my webcam, but I don't think I'll be able to use the webcam because right now I'm recording using the webcam. The microphone, there's no problem, right? The microphone by default is not exclusive. The webcam is exclusive, and I don't know if two applications can use the webcam, so we're not going to use the webcam, just the microphone. We want to uh, save it to a file, so there is the D direct, the first D is device control filters, the second is direct show filters. In direct show filters we have an, excuse me, F, a file writer. Double click, it wants the name of the file, let's call it 1, and the desktop is a good place to place it. Open. And there is our file writer. Let's try and hook these two up together. It refuses. It says no, no can do. All right, so let's try adding between them an AVI multiplexer. We'll discuss these things uh, more in depth in the future. Right now, let's see if it works. I'm connecting. Oh, the connections seem to. Uh, to not cause any errors, which is nice. All right. In two words, a MUX is a multiplexer. A multiplexer is something that receives two streams. Two th two streams can come into a multiplexer, and it and it transforms them into one stream, 
It does it simply by taking two things that are parallel, two streams of data that are parallel to each other, and it just puts them serially one after the other. It's, it's really, um, that, that's basically the idea. So it takes two streams and it turns them into one. That's great. Well, in, in general, but in this case, we don't have another stream. But I guess the ASF, the, the file writer, needs to have a multiplexed stream of AVI, of audio video. So, so the, the microphone does not give out multiplexed audio video. Multiplex means audio with, with video multiplexed. So the format for the file writer is wrong if we simply try and connect the internal mic to the file writer. So we tried adding the AVI multiplexer in between and that seems to take care of everything. At least as far as connecting the filters in the graph. Alright, so the next step would be to actually try and run the graph. So let's run the graph. It seems to be running. Let's let's resize and minimize and minimize and there is our ASF file let's hover over it it seems to be of zero bytes click F5 still seems to be of zero bytes it, it doesn't really mean anything it could be that um, that the file is being built and and the, the audio is right now being funneled into it but nevertheless, the, um, it's not being funneled into the file on the, on the disk. It's right now being buffered. F5, but at one point or another, it should start saying that it is growing. And even if it's not, let's stop the writing to the file. Hover over it again, again hover over it. Yep, yeah, it's 8.23 megabytes. Let's double click it. Double clicking. It seems to be running. Let's, there let's you go. resize. You can hear me. And minimize and minimize. Pause it. But that's our file. Good. So this is a file that we can try and play using the graph that we built using render file. Good. So, so time is short. And I really want to uh, wrap up this lecture. So um, in the lecture, in the next lecture, we'll continue a little bit more of playing with graph edit. We'll maybe first test the file in graph edit, and then we'll go back to the code, hopefully. All right, so as always, thank you very much for being with me, and we'll see you in the next lecture. Goodbye.